I'm coming in. You're on. Welcome in to week 10 of the Goose and the Grizz podcast. Uh, we are your hosts. I am the Grizz. He is Goose. Goose, how you feeling today, brother? Good, bro. Good, bro. Coming to you from uh, from Trujillo, Bajo, Puerto Rico, Roberto Clemente Stadium. You know, just kind of got to represent, got to represent, you know, throw a little culture in the, in the show. Yeah, yeah. Glad you get Wi-Fi over there. I, I didn't know if you'd know the password. So glad you're able to do that right outside the stadium. Appreciate that, that's, bro. Uh, that's better than what you can get in uh, in Orlando and Tampa. So you know, <laughs> kudos to you for that one. Well, uh, let's get into our guest of the week. We got Sahid on the show again with a big win over Kyle. Sahid, where are you at? There he hey. is. Hey, hey. welcome in, brother. How you doing, What's man? Up? Good, man. Good. Glad to be here. Congrats on your 90s NBA score win over <laughs> Kyle. You uh, you both were kind of just uh, uh, having a battle to see who could not have to go down to 500, essentially. So uh-huh. you go to right. six and four. He's five and five. Uh, not a lot of top scoring here, but Bijan at least came through for once. Josh Allen and Debo got you 17. Feel pretty good with the win? Absolutely. I'll take it. You know, anyway, I could take a win to win. Yep. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, I'm tied in first place. I'm not mistaken. Oh! I was going to say, you're, uh, <laughs> that, that coincides with Manny being at six and four as well. I mean, it's, uh, oh, it, it's kind of shocking how your division is gone, bro. I know, right? It's crazy. That's Manny's true. Going five and oh, looks like he's running away with it. And next thing you know, he's got Sahid right on his back. Yeah, he's had, he's had a lot, a lot of injuries. So, you know, he'll be back. True. Yeah, solid win, man. Kyle was a team on the up and up, and yeah, you got your win here. Low score. It's been a lot low, low scoring this season, and it seems to be if you have those that extra five, that extra, you know, five, six points, that's going to get you over the edge uh, this year. Um, you definitely got it done here with um, Debo Samuel, that which you traded for. Most of these players, most of these players, your team is like an imported team, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't even know who's yeah. on my team, honestly. <laughs> there. <laughs> I, I didn't draft them. <laughs> it's just a revolving door. Yeah. I don't look back at the people I traded. I, I don't even check what they've done and just keep me moving. You know, moving them forward, man. That's, oh, that, that's the way that you get into depression if you start doing things like right. that. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I'm, I know this league, you just, you know, got to keep it moving, get that win, and, you know. Got to get Live hot at the right time. There you go. Yeah, you got to get you hot did. at the right time. Mm-hmm. You've done a hell of a job, man. You've been able to get to six and four. And it looks like that Devon A chain might be might be coming back this week. So that's going to give you a, a, a big boost moving forward. So Absolutely. you must be yeah. excited about that. I am. I am. Um, You know, he, hopefully he continues the numbers he, he's done when he started. And we'll see how it goes. Absolutely. And you got a huge game coming up as well. Week 11. Um, it's kind of, it's going to be, I think a measuring stick for you, for you and Carlos, uh, Carlos is eight and two. He just had a measuring stick game and beat Manny. Um, and now he plays you. So it's kind of like a measuring stick for your season, but still kind of a measuring stick for Carlos's fantasy career to see who can kind of <laughs> one up the other this week. Right. Absolutely. I'm glad you said that. Cause I was about to say, I'm taking this week's off, you know. I'm taking it all all the five weeks. You said both things. This is a Carlos's fantasy career. He can't beat me this week. Yeah, yeah. It might not be a year, Carlos. And I'm picking you to win it all. But yeah, I'm taking the week off, man. I, I just uh, you know see it. I got a lot of bye weeks. His team's loaded. Yeah. If I win this week. Hey, I'm, it's meant to be for me to be in first place. Yeah, he's favored by 50 right now. You're missing yeah, two yeah. players, but I don't yeah. think it, it's going to equal that 50 points. But still, it's fantasy. You never know what could happen. You know, he's scoring that's like true. crazy right now, but it could be another 50 to 45 yeah. game, you know? Yeah, that's true, Jordan. You, you never know. But I will be starting a backup running back, so we'll see. Yeah, it's interesting, man. You're one of the very few owners that that, that I've run into that – uh, takes weeks off in fantasy. Uh, almost everybody panics in these kind of situations. <laughs> and our trade deadline has passed, but I'm pretty sure if the trade deadline had, you know, would still, mm. you know, be out there, you'd be able to trade players. Most people in your, in your position would be, you know, trading away pretty much the whole farm just to get one right. win. 
Right. Not you, not you. You stay cool, calm, and collected. You take, you take I, something. I, I looked ahead. I'm three weeks ahead of usually, okay. and I'm like, all right, here's a loss. Here's this. <laughs> hopefully, I can pull. Hopefully, I can pull this one off. You know, and that's it. But this league is very competitive, so you know, hey, anything can happen. Like Jordan said, anything can happen, man. You know. Yeah. And I mean, even if you do end up uh, going down to Carlos, I mean, like, you know, he was alluding to, you know, if you take weeks off, um, you know, sometimes it is for the better because, you know, everybody's going to have bye weeks and you can't, you know, everybody's like, oh, I need to cover my bye weeks. I need to have, you know, make sure that nobody's that has the same bye weeks. And like, why? Because, you know, yeah, that one week you might suck, but the rest of the year you're full strength, you know? Right. So there's different strategies either way for sure. And it doesn't feel good when it's like, Oh man, I know this, this week's going to be a wash. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But Hey, I mean, you know, it's not always, it, it can't be fun and, and you can't win every single week, you know? So absolutely. Yeah. That's true. So, Hey, Carlos, you know, you're gonna, I'm projecting you to win, but hey, anything can happen. If you want to bench a couple players, you know, that's, Oh, make yeah. it even uh, yeah there you go. Make it even. <laughs> handy we're, we're gonna call it a handicap <laughs> well speaking of handicap there were some games that we watched and uh the first game that we were looking at man was the 49ers and what looked like to be the handicap version of the jaguars mm. 34 to 3 now i did not think the jaguars were gonna win but i did not think they were gonna lose by 31 points did you catch any of this shellacking um, I didn't, but you know, I was on the betting side. Like I was kind of like, you know, eh, I think the Niners are gonna win, this and that. But when the game started, you saw it, and I'm just like, man, the Niners are coming off a of bye week. These boys were really prepared. What were they? Two, three game losing streak, and yeah. you know, what I mean, um, eh, Jaguars are still the Jaguars. This, this is an NFC AFC matchup. This is like the Niners had a win. You know, what I mean, nothing against the Jaguars. I'm sure they'll be back next week and. Hey, but it, Niners had a win coming off the bye. Hey, you know, hey, kudos to them and the coaching staff. Very true. Yeah, and, uh, and that begs my – here's a question for you. What is closer, the Jags actually being finally at the point where they can really contend or the 49ers being closer to being past their their current window right now? I think it's a little bit of both. Uh, I'm not sure if uh, Trent Williams plays, but that's a huge loss for the Niners. Yeah. If Trent Williams comes back, they'll be as usual. Debo, you know, it came back, helped them out. Um, who did they get, uh, Goose? Uh, the, the next Reggie White. Chase Young. Yeah, there you go. Reggie White. Right. So, you know, just that addition, and I'm sure they had uh, other injuries. They'll be all right. I think it comes down to Brock Purdy, you know, and yeah. the yeah, and the Jaguars. Um, you know, they can afford this loss. I think they have to start, you know, beating the Texans and you know the division woes and just get hot at the right time. And uh, Sunshine has to get it together, man. Yeah, you know what I mean? Sunshine has definitely yeah. struggled against good defenses, and um, that's the one thing that worried me about him coming into the NFL was. Uh, and you guys seen it, you know, anybody that saw him in college, when he played the really good teams, he looked he looked rough. He, you know, he struggled, and, and he wasn't his usual superstar self. So he had moments where he shined and <clears throat> very few moments where he looked really bad. And when you come to the NFL and you're playing NF, uh, playoff teams, you know, you're that that's what you're going to get. You're, gonna, you're just going to get the worst version of yourself. Yeah. But kudos to the 49ers and Brock Purdy. Uh, he, the dude was just – committing turnovers at a record pace during those three losses and he didn't had no no interceptions in this game um the 49ers came to play um it you know chase young to that 49ers super bowl defense um it's just super scary for whoever has to go up against that um but they're ready the 49ers are ready they've been picked as one of the favorites but again, losing to the Browns and losing, you know, to teams like that, I mean, that get, goes to show you, and you can lose any given Sunday, man. Right, absolutely. And um, again, they're on the bye, going to Florida. Usually, you know, that affects them, the West Coast, East Coast stuff. But NFL did them a favor, too, you know, with the bye week. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and here's a, a review of a game that, 
ended up being a, a lot of fun to watch Browns and the Ravens and uh, cue the breaking news drop right here. Uh, but Deshaun Watson out for the year. We just found that out earlier today. Um, but in the game, he brought the Browns back after having apparently a displaced fracture in his shoulder. Mm-hmm. Uh, still brought them back to win 33-31. Hell of a game. It's a fun but, game. I mean, Brown season, I mean, let's be real here. I mean, it, it's a competitive North. They got a ridiculously good defense, but uh, their season's effectively over they're not winning the super bowl we know that could they make the playoffs could they win the north it's a long shot but i uh, i mean it seems like it's one it's done this year at least yeah i think they're uh they're gonna be playing spoilers and stuff down the stretch yeah it's tough for them because both of these teams are super bowl contenders you know and yeah watson wasn't playing that great but you know he's still a different maker it's gonna be Isn't real it- tough isn't that crazy, Sahid and, and Jordan? Like, I don't know if you you guys remember Deshaun Watson from the Texans, but I remember when I had him. And I know you've had him on a couple of your teams, a previous Jordan, but you would look up at your box score or at your fantasy score, and you would have like maybe five points, four points through the first three quarters. And you're like, this guy's the sorriest quarterback I've ever seen on the planet. And then you look up at the end of the game, the dude has like 15, has 20 points, you know. And this is guy is the classic definition of, of fourth quarter hero. I mean, this guy loves to play hero ball. He loves a happy ending. My goodness. Like this, I mean, talk <laughs> about putting in that extra effort in the fourth quarter. And, and he's like running and running away from pressure and doing all this extra, you know, crazy stuff. And it seemed like we Did got it in little- college too. Right, and it seemed like we got a little bit of this in this game, and we were like, "Oh, wait a minute! I think we got a little bit of uh, you know old uh, Deshaun Watson in this game." And just when you know you think you something you got something good going, then he's out for the whole year. I know that's that's crazy. I don't really know the story, but uh, he opted for surgery, I believe. He did. Yeah, so I don't know. Maybe it's that guaranteed money, and he's just like, "I need to be back next year." He has no incentive to play. Yeah, he doesn't exactly. have any incentive to play. Right. Right, so it's just I don't know. I mean, I didn't I, say he gave up on the team, but I, I don't know. Look, I, I'm going to tell you something. I really do think that, you know, sometimes when, you know, there's allegations and they aren't proven correct, you know, and there's wonders out there and there's still things that look bad. But I feel like karma hits the ones upside the head that really might have screwed up. Because I like Gus was saying when when I had Deshaun Watson, it was actually his rookie year. And it was he got injured. He tore his ACL. I remember that because I found out when I was on a cruise. That was a wonderful slap in the face. Um, But anyway, uh, his rookie year, you know, rookie quarterbacks normally aren't that good for fantasy, you know, but he was killing it for me. He had me in first place. I was soaring high. I had him and he was a late draft pick or a late pickup or something like that. But ever since this, all this stuff came out about him and he took a couple years off and everything, it feels kind of like the Tiger Woods thing, you know, like he just can't get right. And it's like there's not really any other reason except that maybe karma came to bite him in the ass, you know? Um, yeah, hey, that's a little bit of it. But, man, also, man, it's something about going to Cleveland. It just messes up careers, man. Um, I hate to say it. Uh, I don't know. In Chicago with quarterbacks too, it's I don't know, man. Is that what it is? Yeah, it's what just not. It? It's just not meant to be, man. Yeah, it, maybe it's, it's the organization. Cleveland's still going through it. it <laughs> yeah, could be, it could be the organization. I mean, it's just when you give that so much money, and we can get into it some other time. To a quarterback who's been in, injury prone, never really proven anything. We talked about it. The dude hasn't had much playoff su- success um, in his past. It's it's tough to justify that when he gets hurt or when you cannot use him the rest of the year, right? You threw all that money, you put all invested all that money at one position and now the whole team is strapped because you got PJ Walker yeah. or Dorian Thompson in the backup. Yeah. Yeah. You can't afford to take him out of the no. game. I mean, it's like, you know, are you more or less likely to move on from Deshaun when you have to pay him that money? You know, you're right. less likely but at the same time, you've already sunk that cost no matter what happens. So you might as well win. If, if DTR plays well, you know, I'm not saying that he's going to take over Deshaun's job, but you got to make the right call for the team. But I don't think he's going to have much of a chance this year. But the, you know, another sad sack franchise that finally seems to have found their uh, their quarterback for the future. 
the Texans. We were watching CJ Stroud and oh, man, uh, second year in a row or second, second week in a row. Sorry. Uh, and he torched the Bengals with a come from behind win. What a, I mean, this is just fun to see, man. Yeah, he, uh, him and Joey B going at it. We talked about it, right? You got to beat, you got to beat the best to be the best. And Joey, Joey B came in pretty hot into this game. And here's, here's the, the closing minutes of that game. And Tyler Boyd had a big, big time catch. And he had the opportunity to actually win the game for the, for the team. And he had, I think it's right here. He had a nasty drop. That, yeah, that nasty drop in the in the end zone. Yeah, mm -hmm. it cost him uh, the win. But dropping I mean, balls like puberty. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so here we are. What is it? Week ten, and it's another week of C.J. Stroud uh, mania, uh, possible MVP in the conversation. What you think, Sahi? What you think? Um, he he looks like the real deal. Um, yeah. Some receivers, he has weapons. You know what I mean? Some receivers ain't no joke. Um, for this game, I believe uh, they were, the Bengals were missing somebody in the D-line. Yeah. Hubba, yeah, Hubba or something. And then I think Hendricks went Hendricks, out maybe yeah. in this game. You know? mm -hmm. But, uh, like, you see it. You give this kid time, he's going to he's gonna kill you. He's you picking know? teams apart, picking man. Apart. And, That's what it is. Mm -hmm. and, and, like, look, the, like they're, they're wide receivers. We knew they had potential. Like, Nico's been on my roster before, before he broke out, like, last year. And just, you know, didn't have the QB, but he doesn't have like, you know, the huge, amazing wide receivers, you know what I mean? And he doesn't have a good run game. His offensive line has been crap. The defense still ain't where it needs to be. And he's just taking it to the man. He's taking this team. And it's like, yeah. if this is what he's like that first year, wait till he really gets into it the next couple of years, because he can only get better. You know, that's true. He's just very comfortable in that pocket right now. And somebody's going to have to hit him real hard and get him uncomfortable. <laughs> but yeah, he's comfortable. You can tell. Yeah. I mean, but he doesn't have that great of an offensive line. He's got no, he it. It's just, but he, he's, he's smart with it. He, he reminds me and don't get me wrong. I am not comparing him to the goal. Uh, <laughs> uh -oh. He's got a long way to go, uh -oh. Here but, it comes. but, but quarterbacks. And I just mean strictly pocket presence. He has that pocket presence like Brady. Ooh. He can't, he can't, I'm not saying he's a Brady. I'm not saying he's Brady and throwing the ball and taking teams and all that, but he can avoid sacks and get the ball out. And he's not a running quarterback is what I mean. Like he's, he has the presence of mind to move around just a little bit, just, you know, buy himself another half second, get the ball delivered and it's on point. And that's what you need. You need that more than anything. It's better than having a scrambling quarterback. Yeah. Um, what what I seen real quick of him, I remember him in college mm -hmm. was uh, like he had the arm, he had everything. The only thing is, I believe when the games I watched, he was turning the ball over, and this was on first down, second down, and then now here in the NFL, he's not turning the ball over. But let's just wait and see. One the pick. Yeah. One okay. pick. Something like that. But um, let's just wait till next year or whatever. If he's not turning the ball over, yeah. then yeah, we could say he's the real deal. You know what I mean? Got to give it a couple of years, though, for me, my opinion. Yeah, and actually, I'm wrong. I'm sorry. He had a pick in this game, so he has yeah. two picks all four. year. I, but I think still, I know two. Four. No, two, two. Yeah, he threw his second pick in this game. Yeah, wow. two picks. I mean, but that's after they had their bye week, so nine games, two picks. Wow. Yeah. I mean, hell, the only person that might be better than him is the the real goat, you know, Sahid's goat, Jameis Winston. I mean, hey, he, we're, and we're gonna he only throws like two interceptions in a quarter, you know. Yeah, we'll, oh, we'll, we'll we'll touch on him. Two things before we leave. Uh, um, so uh, he's having a great year. Do you think he is an MVP candidate this year? Oh, I saw some projections about him today. He's about to shatter every uh, rookie uh -huh. record. Like, I think it's 31 touchdowns. Herbert, if you project like 40 something, mm -hmm. he's, he's about to beat Luck, passing yard for like 600. Mm -hmm. um, MVP, wow. Uh, maybe if he could win the division. Okay. And, you know, if he wins the division and yeah, he shatters all the records, he throws 5,000 yards and wins. If he division. makes the playoffs, I think it's, it's, a, it, it's a possibility. Absolutely. Because who else is in the running? Josh Allen struggling. No, uh, no, Lamar Jackson. Lamar Lamar's Jackson. been playing great, real football mm -hmm. at least. Right, it's what Mahomes or Hurts. Yeah, you know. So yeah. Now, he, he now don't 
don't sleep on and i understand i do not like the cowboys but do not do not sleep on dak and the only reason why i'm saying that is because he has an absolute cake schedule if he keeps lighting up the stats and the cowboys don't lose much which they shouldn't with that schedule that they have and especially if they win the division because if they end up even with the eagles they have one more game Dak could surprise i'm not hoping for it god knows i'm not but I mean, Dak has the schedules lined up to to really be able to take advantage of it, and he might get the numbers he needs. True. What about some uh, non quarterbacks for MVP? You know what I mean? Ooh. Could, could this be the year for that? Mm, with Tyreek Hill, Tyreek, CMC, or I don't know. They should, but it's not going to happen, gonna man. Happen. The MVP is just it's so quarterback oriented. It shouldn't mm-hmm. be that way, but at the mm-hmm. same time. You know, it, you know, you really see how important quarterback is when one of the great ones is out. You know, look at the Jets, right? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I mean, it, it's 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 the most important position, but they really should have a non QB MVP for sure. Yeah. Right. Last but not least, Josh Dobbs. This guy, Dobbs. This was Jordan's guy. He was looking at him. He's excited about him. He told me he, he, he goes to sleep, dreams about him. He's talking about Josh Dobbs, Jordan. Hey, it just shows you don't need you don't need hair to kick it. So uh, <laughs> I'm telling you, man, he did good. I mean, you know, I think that it was very fortunate of the Vikings to get him. It, it's very rare that there's a quarterback who has some proven recent tape that you can take and apply and have some weapons around him. And they have that, you know, that they're, they're, Madison's hurt right now, but the running game isn't their strength. That's when Justin Jefferson comes back and Addison and Hawkinson is a beast. I mean, you throw all those guys in there, um, you know, Dobbs, I think, has a real shot to make some noise. And it's just amazing. Imagine being a backup on what the Browns, I think, was where he started. Brown, and then Jaguars. Going to, yeah, yeah, going to Arizona and going one and eight and knowing that, you know, your season's almost over. And now he might be able to make a, a, he might start a game in the playoffs at this, at this rate. Yes. He's been around everywhere. He sure, he certainly has. One, one thing before we leave this, this high praise of Josh Jobs, I want to go over uh, this, this little snippet here. I don't know if you recognize Uh, this dude here. He looks familiar to me. I don't know. He might be a little more familiar to you. But <laughs> hey, wait a minute! Who's that throwing the ball? <laughs> I missed this. I missed this game. Wait a minute! Oh, that that's a dime. Ooh, look at how that. could <laughs> that hey, is how, a dime? I will wait. tell you one thing though. Hey, Jameis uh, is as much as I ride Jameis for being a bad football quarterback overall. He is amazing for fantasy. He is amazing for because honestly, yeah, he might turn the ball over and throw a pick six, but nothing's better for a quarterback than throwing a pick six. You get those two points, get right back on the field. And now you're having a pass to catch up. Yeah, it seems like this guy's like doing some backyard football here. Look at this. This is beautiful. Yeah. He has a Whoa. He, this this guy has a he should never have thrown that ball. That was no, that was our old place, Saheed. Remember that one? Yeah, I remember. <laughs> hey, let, me, let me know what you think about this one right here. I got another one. So the man out there, whoop, just slings oh, it. There God. goes the ball. Who's it going to? I don't know. Oh, Lord. <laughs> this guy's just throwing the ball up there. I don't know, man. One, one more, I, one I, more. I, I'm seeing what you're saying, what you, say, what you say about him, Jordan, a little bit. One more, one more. But, here goes the ball. Where's it, it going? No, oh, oh, there it is. It. Triple that's coverage. Horrible. Yeah, that's horrible. But he has his mentality. He's probably not the smartest, but he has his mentality. I'm down. I'm just gonna throw the ball up in the air. And right. I get it now. What you said, Jordan. He he ain't that type of guy. That just gotta, you know, he's, he's gonna win you games. Gonna lose you games. And obviously, that, he's especially a, when they're da- when they're down. His, especially. his number one problem is. He's actually really smart pre snap. He understands, uh, you know, all the the theories and everything. They show, they've shown that. Like, he's really a smart guy pre-snap. He can recognize everything. But if you throw a wrinkle in there, you throw a zone blitz, if someone comes that he's not expecting, which he doesn't have it down 100%, he gets flustered real quick, and he will make a bad throw. He will absolutely throw your team under the bus. So, Yeah. I love it. Hey, what, he needs some reps, though. Don't you think he needs some more reps? I agree. 
for your sake, I'll agree. For your sake, I know that you want to see him out there, get your Kleenex and KY, but, you know, hey, that when, reminded... when Jameis retires, I'll, I'll throw you a funeral party, okay? Hey, that reminds me when we used to play Smear the Queer. Remember that one? Uh, yeah. Or, or 500? You just mm, throw it up? Tackle 500. Yeah, tackle 500. <laughs> yeah. That was bad. That was bad. I'll, I'll be honest with you. It was pretty bad. Last one. Last one before we let you go. Uh, let's see. Uh, Jordan. Something that you're watching for next week. You're watching Josh Allen. Why? Yeah. Josh Allen and the new Bills offensive coordinator, Joe Brady. I want to okay. see what they do versus the Jets. And the reason being is that the Jets, I mean, if Josh Allen thinks he's been having a hard time recently with turnovers, he ain't seen nothing yet. Uh, the Jets are amazing against the pass right now. And uh, they've made everybody that they play look pedestrian so i'm interested to see how it looks having joe Brady. and i don't know what why they made this move all together i get that they are trying to shake some things up and you know i it seems like they've been spreading the ball around a little better this year than in years past but i don't know what they're trying to accomplish i think they're trying to protect josh allen from himself honestly that name sounds familiar joe brady oh you know you know who that is he worked with Joe Burrow or something in college. I think. He did. A good one. Mm -hmm. like he also worked with Drew Brees. Oh, Brees too. Oh, okay. That's, yeah. Like Jordan, enlighten us of what this guy's all about. Yeah. yeah. Is he a West Coast guy? Yeah, I mean, you're 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 pretty much looking at more West Coast type style, but I mean, it's it's going to be more of a difference, I think, on. Um, how they attack and how they and how they get more consistent because there been no there's been no consistency in the play calling like you see it like Monday night where James Cook goes out there he had that fumble okay yep. fine it was on a catch um, that he got the fumble then uh, they bench him and you know finally they let him back in he's ripping off chunk plays and then they go away from him there's no consistency there's no plan there's no actual uh, it, it seems like they're just taking shots in the dark like we do on Madden, you know. Oh, let me try this play. This feels good, you know. It just doesn't work out. I think Joe Brady has more of that QB's mindset of let's get this guy in a rhythm that actually is beneficial for him, completing passes, building his confidence so that when he does take that big shot, the guy's going to be open and not triple covered, you know. Yeah, there's definitely something wrong in Buffalo. But so in that from Joe Brady, from what I remember, a very run centric offense, West Coast, you know, established. They don't have a running back right now, unless the goal is to lean on Uncle Lenny. Oh. So, do you think it'll be a more Could run focused be. offense with maybe some design runs for Josh Allen? Or what that's you how you protect your quarterback. I mean, you yeah. protect your quarterback by getting a good run game and getting more consistent. And that's not the Bills' MO lately. Right. So, it could be one of the changes that they're trying. Um, if Lenny's going to have any impact, I think it's going to be once the games start getting colder and I know the playoff Lenny, but they got to get to the playoffs first. So yeah, they better do something. I mean, why not put Lenny out there? I mean, but the thing is though, is James Cook is actually good on a per snap and per run basis. He is amazing, but they don't give it to him enough. And honestly, if you're trying to, to, to make a huge difference, I think you need to put the playmaker out there, which is James Cook and have Lenny spell him. So, yeah, I think. I think Buffalo's cleaning house at the end of the year. Uh, really? I yeah, I don't know. If they don't it make the playoffs, be. I would agree. Yeah, even if they make it and lose in the first round. Yeah, but, Sa but Saheed, Saheed, how much is this actually the Madden curse or oh. just Josh <laughs> Allen? Just, I mean, what's going on? Why why so many turnovers this year? It could be that Madden curse, but that guy has always been reckless for some reason. Josh Allen, you know what I mean? I don't, I don't know. I can't tell you, but it could be that Madden curse. Ain't no telling. <laughs> and then that defense ain't what it is either, you know. No. And he's not helping them with turnovers, right? Yeah, it's it's partly some of the they've definitely had some injuries that are impacting it, but they also never really got a true two next to uh, Diggs, and uh, they're trying to do that now with Kincaid and Gabe Davis, but it just isn't fully clicking. They aren't uh, they they've gone down from being one of the top teams in the league. So I agree. I think losing Brian <clears throat> Brian Dayball did him more harm than good and uh right. I don't know. I don't know how they're going to fix it mid midway through the season. Yeah, that's fine. All right, last thing, something that I'm watching for next week. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> 
that was an MVP hit right there. So, like, so why why are you why are you watching him when they they could basically roll me out there and they could still win the game against the Panthers? Like, uh, hey, this guy's playing at MVP level. Watch Dak hand off. <laughs> <laughs> He's playing great, man. You cannot deny this guy um, has been spot on. He started out so flat to start out the season. He's had multiple 300-yard uh, games the past three games. Uh, I guess you could say one versus one good team, Philly, you know, Super Bowl contending, and he scored over 30 points in those three games. He's been he's been on fire. What? So what happened? What happened here, guys? Come on. I, somebody explain this to me because I drafted him, and I saw nothing, dropped him, and guess what? Fireworks now. Who who has him in our league? Uh, we Sam. appreciate your sacrifice. Oh man, Sam. you're welcome. <laughs> I don't know, man. I just see your Dallas as a a passing team, so I don't know. I just maybe that's for the big numbers. I don't know. Tell us something, Jordan. They're What's the reason? finally they finally realized that hyper targeting the best player probably in the NFC East right now and CD lamb, one of the best receivers, at least, I mean, don't get me wrong. AJ Brown is amazing, but CD lamb is truly one of those generational type of receivers as well. So you target him until they finally cover him and to cover him, they have to vacate other areas of the field. And that's when you get Brandon cooks. That's when you hit up, yeah. you know, your, your Ferguson, that's when you get, um, you know, even uh, Gallup was involved this past game. So it's again, using your best players, which, you know, again, Mike McCarthy is a fucking moron because he should have been no. He should have known that already. He coached Devonte Adams and Aaron right. Rodgers. He knew what a quarterback's best friend is for his get out of jail free card. Uh, but Mike McCarthy can't get out of his own way. So, you know, go figure. It, it's the the it, it's definitely a better scheme. But the thing is, is it's going to work against these softer cake secondaries. I don't know how it's going to work in the playoffs. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. CD Lamb has been tar- getting targeted over 14 targets in the past three games, over 150 yards in those last three games, uh, 40 points in two of those games. Uh, CD Lamb has been on lock. Yeah. I-, I was surprised I didn't get, you know, Brandon Cooks was struggling, but, you know, he, he came up big last week. He sure did. Mm-hmm. Well, guys, I think that's that's it with Saheed. Hey, so appreciate, he, appreciate you. you being on, man, and uh, hey. good luck coming up. I know you're taking this week off, but good luck rest of the year, too. <laughs> appreciate you guys. Appreciate, appreciate y'all for having me, man.